so much to say on the topic and uh, even less time due to this uh, trouble with my laptop. And I will actually quote a lot of open source uh, uh, websites and, and, and statements. And uh, the first statement I will quote, uh, it's today's uh, opening, opening keynote speech uh, done uh, by Marcus Ranum. Uh, the title of the speech was Cyber Espionage is about stealing backup tapes. And uh, also he was also saying that cyber warfare is uh, uh, basically a bullshit, okay? Just incidentally, my presentation is partially overlapping with his presentation, but as you will see, uh, we are coming to totally different conclusions. Um, first of all, we will talk about embedding spyware at hardware level and the necessity to have an open uh, source hardware project. I will explain you why it's necessary to do that. And I will start by citing the Bible and uh, at least in the Christian uh, uh, community, the first news about spies, it's already included in the Bible. Comes, uh, it's a sort of activity that comes uh, since uh, a very long time ago uh, it, because it's really convenient uh, and it gives you so many advantages against your competitor and you have to put so little effort compared to the results that you can get uh, that's definitely it's convenient at least to try to spy on your enemies. I will start by citing uh, some embedded spyware, I will put between brackets uh, uh, spyware, by citing uh, uh, software level embedded spyware. And I have a vulnerability here related to Sol Solaris. It was dated back to 2002 or 2003, if I remember well. On the Telnet TV daemon, it was uh, enough to send uh, um, a payload containing 64 character, C character, and then you were able to obtain uh, the shell. The, com the security community was actually wondering whether this vector was already embedded in the beginning, uh, having a, uh, a special meaning, having a purpose to serve as a, as a real vector, or it was just a coding accident. Uh, I cannot tell you if it was a real vector or not, but uh, anyway, it comes strange that by sending 65 C character and not, for example, D character, I am able to switch on a remote shell and get control of the, of the machine. But we had several other cases of uh, embedded spyware and software level. You remember definitely the Sony BMG case. They were distributing rootkits uh, in their own uh, uh, CDs. You were installing uh, uh, the software provided by, by Sony and you didn't know you were installing a rootkit, you know, a spyware on your system. Um, some articles talking about uh, Chinese version of eBay Skype VoIP tool having embedded spyware. Or, for example, this is the last uh, uh, discovery. It's dated 10 days ago. I'm Italian, and the biggest telecom operator is Telecom Italia. They distributed, uh, they distributed uh, tens of thousands uh, of, of uh, such uh, DSL modem, both to home users and to companies, and then the security researchers, they discover that by sending a special crafted package, you could get access to the, to the, to the router. So it was embedding uh, a backdoor. Now, after being questioned, Telecom Italia said, well, we embedded this backdoor for services purposes. You never know, you might want to update your, your system, your router, we might want to distribute patches, and by having this backdoor, uh, it's more convenient and easy for us to do it. But the question is, shouldn't you tell me when you sell me your equipment that it contains backdoor? I might decide to buy it anyway, but you should tell me. I give you an example. If you buy aspirin, they tell you, you know, aspirin is very good for headache, but it has also some side effects. Uh, the main undesirable side effects of aspirin are gastrointestinal ulcer, stomach bleeding, and tinnitus, especially in higher doses. Well, you buy aspirin anyway, 
but you know you have some you might have some troubles so if I am buying any given piece of equipment especially related to network or network security of course I would like to know everything about it what's embedded what a remote controller can do and so on so it should sound like this when you buy a Telecom Italia router you should find on a piece of paper a warning warning this router contains a vector embedded by the manufacturer for service reason hackers discovery of such vector might lead to compromised network and to headaches for sysadmins in such case aspirin would be highly recommended <laughs> to me so logic I'm buying a piece of equipment which is managing my critical network because my network as a company or even as a private individual it's so critical for me nowadays we're in the third millennium I want to know everything about it I have the right to know every single bits and bytes of what's embedded in it we have a very famous politician in Italy he is a very famous Catholic uh, uh, Catholic politician who was saying Thinking bad is a sin from the Catholic point of view, but it often turns to be right. So <clears throat> now that this telecom router thing went public because of their security researcher's job, it's too easy to say, but you know, we embedded it only for service reason. I might believe it if you were maybe telling me before, but not after. It's too convenient to take it as an excuse and you have no idea of how many similar cases they have been discovered in the in the recent years in uh, network equipment Ronald Reagan trust but verify so it's all about it when we are talking about security we are talking about buying solutions which we trust good but we should be able to verify and unfortunately, nowadays, verifying what's inside a security appliance or a network appliance, it's nearly impossible. We will see why it's nearly impossible. We were talking about embedded spyware at software level. But the next step will be, if it has not been already, embedding spyware at hardware level. Why? It's very convenient. It's hidden, and it's even encouraged by the law. It's the same law who is protecting uh, uh, the rights of the hardware manufacturer, who is telling you that you, you have basically no right to do any reverse engineering over the equipment. So if I have such law which is covering my shoulder, if I have some nast nasty purposes, definitely I would take the chance to embed some spyware at hardware level. We will see then later where and how to embed it and maybe we will see some real examples talk uh, going back to this morning talk <clears throat> Marcus Ranus he was saying uh, cyber espionage is all about stealing the backup tapes all the rest hacking it's basically useless well my point of view is totally different I say that embedding spyware at hardware level versus stealing the backup tapes it's all about the difference between tactic and strategy. If I, if I have the need for espionage purposes to steal backup tapes, then here I'm talking about tactic. I have an immediate problem. I need to find a way to solve it. And stealing the backup tapes is one of the ways. But when I'm talking about embedding at hardware level uh, spyware, I'm talking about strategy. If I have a long-term view, then, strate strategically speaking, it will be probably the best thing to do. If I was a consultant of a government and they were asking me, what would be the best strategy in the interest of our nation's security uh, uh, to do for in, in the espionage uh, uh, environment? I would say, well, it's definitely embedding something at the hardware level. It's difficult to, to, be, to be spotted. You might not even uh, use it. But still you have it. You have the possibility to have something hidden and silent in the system you are selling all over the world. And just in case you need it, you can activate it. 
If you go to the United States, we have some American guys here. It's very common to have lawsuits and class actions against automotive uh, uh, manufacturers. GM, General Motors, is one of the best, of the, the most favorite from, for, for class actions. Basically, you buy a GM car. I remember a case, the tires exploding on GM SUVs. Uh, several people died. Then they were watching what, why they're exploding the tires. Because the tires shoulder, metal shoulder, was actually <clears throat> uh, uh, melted in the wrong way over the, the tire carcass. So it was exploding and causing uh, 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 death and damages. Somebody was cutting the tire. Why the hell they are exploding? They were cutting the tires. They were, oh, they are defective at designing level. They were design defective. So by having the knowledge that the tires that were defective at design level, they open uh, a clash, class action uh, 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 lawsuit against General Motors, and they won the case. But if we are talking about uh, hardware, the situation is rather critical. Going back to the automotive uh, industry, it's allowed to do any sort of reverse engineering of your car. You can take your tires, you can cut it, you can open your engine, you can do whatever you want. Because after all, you put your life at risk with your car. And any kind of tampering with your car, discovery made accidentally by you of something which is not working on your car, will not lead you to court troubles. But in uh, in the IT industry, I, will speaking about, I was speaking about that also the last year in my previous speech. This will give you troubles. You are not allowed to do any sort of reverse engineering because of the current set of laws. And this is encouraging, actually, manufacturers or evil manufacturers or even third parties to embed something strange in your systems. Well. When I'm talking about a car, to me, a car is a critical infrastructure because without a car, I cannot live, I cannot work, and it's a critical infrastructure because I base my life on it. If it doesn't work, if it crashes, if it, if it flips over because the tires are exploding, I will die. Therefore, a car is a critical infrastructure for me and for my family. When we talk about internet and computer, is it a critical infrastructure? What is a critical infrastructure? You can read it here on Wikipedia. I'm a big fan of Wikipedia. Which in critical infrastructure, it is everything which is managing uh, uh, something like electricity, uh, gas production, telecommunication, water supply, heating, public health. So if I stop the computer of the national health system, will it cause that great, great damage or small damage? Of course, great damage. No, it's a critical infrastructure. So why the hell we have such strange situation where I can reverse engineering my, my car, but I cannot do the same for a much critical infrastructure than the car, such as all the equipment which is connected to the internet. internet. After all, if you pay attention, nowadays your entire life is based on something which is uh, uh, connected to the internet, Possible, possibly a personal computer or a computer or a server which contains your data or managing infrastructures uh, on which you're basing your life. So my point of view it is we are adopting worldwide uh, due to lobbyistic system, a strong lobbyistic system, the wrong set of laws. We should force the manufacturer of software and hardware to open source everything, especially in the case of critical infrastructures. Whenever I'm buying a software or a piece of hardware which is serving a critical infrastructure, then I should, I should always have the right to pick inside and to see exactly how it works and precisely what it contains. No hidden backdoors or service backdoors like uh, the one in, in Telecom Italia routers. A very old example I was given a long, uh, giving a long time ago. I'm sorry, I, I'm still jet lagged and my, my English is not very good. Please forgive me. Um, you remember the, the printer, the color printer case, no? The, the lobby of the printer manufacturer uh, decided to embed uh, together with the US government, and only the US government knew about it. 
um, a special spyware in your color laser printer. So whenever you were printing something, the laser printing was actually printing using uh, yellow microdots. You couldn't spot with your own eyes. You should magnify 60 times uh, the, the yellow. Why yellow? Because yellow over white still is very much invisible. You should actually magnify it 60 times and watch it under a blue light. Very difficult to spot. And on each printed page, the co most of the color laser printers, they were printing uh, sensible information like the serial number of the printers. And, uh, and if I have the serial number of the printer and you purchase the printer with your credit card, I know actually by cross-checking the databases of the vendors of the printer and the vendors of the hardware who sold you the, the, the laser printer that uh, you actually were purchasing this particular model of, with this serial number of color laser printer. And nobody told us. Again, the security community, the researchers, they were discovering it. You remember, long time ago, I was showing this picture. What is it? A network card. And I was usually asking to the people, how do you know it's a network card? Well, because you see, the way it is shaped, it's obviously, obviously a network card. Well, you trust it is a network card, but you don't actually know what's running on it. Do you have any chance to see inside the chip? This thing is managing all of your data, everything, all of your company secrets, all of your government secrets. Everything is passing through this pipe, a digital pipe. And if I have any sort of control, maybe because I embedded a long time ago at the manufacturer level, some sort of spyware in, within the hardware, I might be able to control it. You want some very real example? Here we go. For those who are long time fan of Zone H, I have one guy here, by the way, he's a military guy, US. You remember we were publishing comics with some strange hacker topics. This comic is the first episode we published. And it, is, uh, <clears throat> it was published in the year 2003. The comic title is Network Conspiracy. The story is about a corporation who is manufacturing network chips doing some damping strategy over the pricing so underpricing the network chip so that many hardware manufacturers and the same network car manufacturer will buy this network chip and the network chip was obviously embedding a backdoor in the comic episode the corporation uses this backdoor to stop all the internet communication. You can imagine what kind of damage you have if you stop the internet communication. Because if I tell to all the network cards around the world, please stop functioning, then we all will be in serious trouble, believe me. Lots of critical infrastructures in the country will not work. This was year 2003. Was I a visionary? Year 2006, U.S. government restricts China PC. BBC News. What happened? You remember Lenovo was buying out the IBM production facility. So the U.S. government was thinking wisely. Uh, well, <clears throat> we might have some trouble if we are going to buy IBM computer, which are actually manufactured entirely in China, given the um, high highly evident attitude of some Chinese people, not all of them, not the Malaysian Chinese, <laughs> but the Chinese Chinese, to do sort of espionage activities. No, we have news all over the world about it. 2006. But in 2003, we already were stating in the comic, hey, this might happen. At least now, the governments are concerned, and they are rightly concerned. And they, they should be even more concerned in the future because this is going to happen, believe me. Let's go ahead. Always in the comic, how the embedded spyware was discovered at hardware level? We give an explanation. We say, well, we have to check what's really inside the, this chip, network chip. So we will do a 3D scan an X-ray, 3D X-ray representation of the chip 
Because you know, chips are multi-layered. It's not very easy. It's not just enough to take a X-ray, a, a, a traditional X-ray picture. You have to have several layered X-ray picture. It's very difficult. Then you have the result of what's actually inside at logic circuit level, the chip. But then you have to pass the result into a software which will analyze what's the connection between all the logic gates, uh, therefore trying to rebuild the behavior with a good approximation of what it is inside the network chip. Once again, year 2003. By using this bulky equipment that we represented in the comic on the, on the left, uh, you see the lady touching this bulky equipment. This is a 3D X-ray scanner. Well, year 2008, DARPA, which is Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, a branch of US military, looks for ways to verify integrated computer chip security. So they started to think, hmm, somebody might embed some spyware at chip level. We have, and then they sell it to us. We are not anymore manufacturing everything. Lots of things are, so, are manufactured abroad, most of them in China. We have to find a way to verify if the chip is really the chip that it was meant to be or if it is containing something strange. How do we do it? They founded a special project called Trust in IC. There are three companies basically, uh, they are subcontractors of such, uh, such projects. You have to know that I am a very big fan of uh, US military programs and uh, the guy know, here knows very well I was analyzing all of this, uh, all of the military uh, programs uh, related to uh, computer and computer security. So there are three companies, X-Radia, Loon Innovation and Radio. You cannot probably read from there but the, the box, the square box on the top it's saying, well, we will have a chip manufacturer that will design um, a chip. MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, will take care uh, of embedding some spyware at hardware level. Then the chip will be manufactured. manufactured. And then it will be given to these three companies, X-Radia, Loon Innovation, and Raytheon. What they will do? They will act as a team performing sort of analysis. Guess what sort of analysis? X-Radia, which is a company providing X-ray products, will provide a special multi-layer 3D X-ray scanner. And the other two companies will provide software analysis of the result, of the imaging result coming out of the scanner. Pretty much the same, precisely the same actually. We were actually writing in the comic five years before. Even, even the same machine looks very much, you see the machine? It's basically the same we were designing in the comic long time ago. So, probably it's time to ask for royalties to the US defense. We were giving free advices to DARPA. Well, there is a bad news and good news. The bad news is, yes, but this is a comic. Dear friends at, the, at DARPA, you are doing the wrong thing. We were just drawing a general idea on the comic. But what you are funding this, product, this program, Trust in AC, it's not the way to do the proper thing. I explain you why. Will it work? No, it will not work. It will be probably another waste of US taxpayers' money. Why? because they are using the wrong philosophical approach. They are thinking, I'm buying some hardware from, uh, I don't know, China. I suspect this hardware is not trustable. Something might be embedded. So what, what I do, I establish this, this uh, military program, which will allow me, I don't think it will work, but even if it will work, it will allow me to understand if that particular chip in my hand, and only that one, is or is not embedding malware, which is a total waste of time, because if I am already suspecting that the chip might be uh, uh, embedding some malware, then I have to act the other way around. I should take a bottom-to-top approach. What, what do I mean? 
Well, I don't care. Actually, to understand precisely what the suspected chip is doing. I shouldn't waste my time. It, it, is it a suspected chip, yes or no? Yes, well, good. Then let's try to implement a technology at manufacturing level that will, it will tell me immediately if the chip it is what it was meant to be originally. Think about yourself going through the custom uh, border. I don't know, I always come here in Malaysia, or for example, when I go to the United States, I have to give the passport, which is a very much secure passport with all the latest technology, RFID chips, and, and so on. They're going to take my fingerprint. They're going to take, uh, they have a huge collection of my face uh, 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 features. No, they took it uh, hundreds of times. No, every time I go in there, they take once again and again and again the same picture of my face. Good. So what they want to know? They want to know if I am who I pretend to be. So the, 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 the op optimal way to recognize if a chip is a legitimate chip, it is to embed, for example, a sort of hardware hashing fingerprinting the hardware, at the very same moment I am actually building the circuit at the design level, still on CAD station, okay? Plus the implementation of a challenge response. I have, a, for example, a public key which gets submitted to the chip and the chip will give an answer that can be verified only by the manufacturer. In this way, I, I know immediately if the chip is the right chip or the wrong chip. I don't have to waste time and money understanding the technology embedded, the spy technology embedded in the chip. So this is another piece of free advice for the US government. We'll see in the future if it will work or not. Another article, open source. US government. Worrying about electronic backdoors in military hardware, paranoia or pragmatism? They took an example on what it happened a uh, short time ago to the Syrian uh, radar system. Israel decided to have a preemptive strike against Syria by bombing some installations that were suspected to be uh, installations that were manufacturing components to help to build an atomic bomb. Syria had a very good system of radar to intercept incoming aircrafts. But during the Israeli attacks, attack, the whole Syrian radar system was down. I mean, down, not working. Not that it was not just recognizing the aircraft, because you can use a stealth aircraft in that case. It was down, off. And everybody was asking, himself. Well, we might speculate that a sort of hidden backdoor was embedded in the Syrian hardware at the production level. You never know. You might need to use it. We will never be capable to, to say and to state precisely if it was a real backdoor or not. And I don't care, actually. All, all I care of is understanding if, if a concept uh, of a hidden backdoor at hardware level is a viable solution at military level. And to me, it is a very viable solution. You have to ask yourself, who owns your critical data? You think you are the owner of the data? You are wrong. The first owner of your data is your hardware. Data is in your hardware. Therefore, the hardware manufacturer owns your data much better than you. Second, as we are all connected to the internet and your data is transiting over the internet, your ISP is owning the data much before you do. Then your employees are owning your data if you are the owner of a company. You might have some disgruntled employees selling uh, your data to somebody else. It already happened several times. And then, and only then, comes yourself you are the last one in a row. And when, when it comes the time to, well, now I realize that after the, my ma hardware manufacturer, my ISP, my employees, finally I am the owner of my data, 
I might discover that some hacker already owned your data a long time ago. A very interesting piece of news. According to the Department of Homeland Security, computer hardware accounted for 9% of all types of counterfeited goods seized by the US Customs. Counterfeited chips. Now, counterfeiting the chips means most of the time I sell you a Pentium 3 and on the top of the chip I will print Pentium 4. In Chinese shops it's happening all the time. <laughs> but it's very easy now to embed something strange at the production level because the capacity to embed hardware at ASIC level, it's in everybody's hands now. Chinese factories are producing very much sophisticated integrated circuits. So the technology to embed malware in your hardware, it exists, it's available and on the table and probably it has been already used. Danger of fakes, how counterfeit defective computer components from China are getting into US warplanes and ships. You have to start to get seriously worried because we, we are talking about US because US it's hitting the news very easily, but why not Malaysia? After all, we are all buying the same equipment. It's manufactured for, every, for all of us in the same part of the world. There are only few companies who are manufacturing chips. And even if they don't want to embed, even if they're clean companies, there are ways, uh, we will see later, that malicious people would uh, adopt to embed malware in your hardware. Well, I actually uh, highlighted China when I think about the global economy implication. You see the results, all of us uh, understand the results of a global uh, economization. No? We have a single world and the result of the globalization, it is that service, the high service level is still in the Western world. But the, the production facilities, the production capability has been moved toward China. And the lower service capability has been moved toward India, call centers. No, a lot of US companies are using call centers in India. So even if you think you are buying a domestic product because it's labeled made in US, it was actually assembled in US, but most, or in Malaysia, but most of the, of the hardware, chip, logic circuits are coming from Far East. Now, again, connecting to Marcus Ramos today uh, opening speech. His big, biggest mistake uh, during his speech, uh, I don't want to criticize uh, him, I'm just having a different opinion. And you are here, you are, you're very lucky because you have the chance to hear two different people saying two totally different things. Then you are smart guys, you can make up your own mind. <laughs> My task it is to tell you that I don't, I don't agree totally, but totally on the speech, I don't know. Did you hear the speech this morning? Must, okay, I, I totally don't agree on what he was saying, totally. First time in my life. <laughs> because he was, he was too much US centric and too much marine centric. The world is not anymore as it used to be during the Vietnam War. When we had beefed up, Jewish up marine guys with big mass Rambo style, you know, that are, were killing the enemies. Now the war, it's a totally different level. This is the age of asymmetric warfare. And he was saying, uh, if anywhere any embedded spyware would be used, would be, US will be the one to use it, not the other countries such, for example, Liechtenstein, he was saying. I'm saying the totally opposite, opposite thing. If I am Liechtenstein, and if I am at war against the United States, I, I know I have no chances to survive a traditional conflict with traditional weapons. So I would move what Iraqi did to the asymmetric warfare. Iraqi, they choose the asymmetric way of warfare by doing guerrillas, city guerrilla. Being Liechtenstein guy, I might choose to go on the cyber spyware, cyber warfare. After all, the Great Wall of China was useful thousands of years ago. Today, it doesn't have any more sense. If I want to hit my enemy, I don't need to cross the border. 
I don't need to deploy my paratro paratroopers. I don't probably need to shoot any bomb. I will hit through the network, and I will cause economical damages. Economical damages, this is warfare. My enemy will lose, and my enemy will suffer. How would you embed, if you were the evil guy, how would you embed spyware at the hardware level? I tell you how would I embed it. First of all, I would try to hack from remote the manufacturer's card station. Even if the manufacturer is a legitimate company, doesn't even think about embedding something uh, strange in the chip. Do you have any idea how complicated is a logic circuit? Once it's designed, it's, it's, it's a group of systems of systems of systems of subsystems. And when you watch the whole big picture of a, of, of, of a chip, computer chip, you get lost. So it's very easy to hack something and to embed some extra uh, circuits at card level. Or, for example, just substituting the CAM files at the production facility. So the manufacturer was designing the proper chip. Well, I will just substitute the whole project or part of it during the production level. Or, for example, it already happened. Full hardware counterfeiting sold through unofficial channels. It's very easy today to buy Cisco routers, which are not Cisco routers. I am wearing... Gucci shoes uh, paid ten dollars uh, in Egypt uh, coming from China. <laughs> you might be able to buy at a discounted price a counterfeited Cisco router coming from God knows where. There is also a big business in hardware refurbishment. They are taking used uh, network appliances, they are refurbishing it cleaning it, polishing it, and then reselling to you with a guarantee. Well, this is a perfect time to substitute some of the components and to embed something strange. But assuming it's difficult, I would embed something at core component level. The same Cisco, they are not manufacturing any, uh, everything. No, they have to rely on several other component manufacturers. So I would probably hack some component, external component manufacturer, some subcontractor facility, and I will embed something in a specific chip. Then Cisco will buy it and will implement it in its own equipment. Or why not? If I cannot hack, if I cannot substitute, if I can do nothing, I can still intercept the good physically and substitute them. It's very, I would pay some bribes to some guys in the Russian custom, for example, he will buy 10 boxes of vodka, will be very happy, and I will have very easy access to the stored goods, which are just transiting through the custom border, and I will just substitute with my own goods, embedding my own malware. And if you are a government, you're buying these goods to protect your own infrastructure, then I will have access, full control of your critical infrastructure. This is not any more science fiction. The, there are so many and too many examples in the real life already happened that should ring a bell in our head. Now, we have several places in which we could embed malware at hardware level. Computers, phones, network equipment, security equipment, backbone routing, phone routers, printers, IP surveillance. You have this, I don't know if you see this little red circle. Uh, it means uh, already done. So in network equipment, backdoors have already been discovered. In security equipment, undeclared backdoors have already been discovered. In the backbone routing equipment, Cisco, backdoors have already been discovered, service purposes, okay? In phone routers, we had a big scandal in Greece uh, uh, two years ago where uh, the, uh, Vodafone Greece was actually supplying CIA with uh, uh, data and voice interception by using an embedded uh, backdoor in uh, Ericsson routers, telephone routers. Nobody knows why this backdoor was included, probably for the same um, service purposes, but still it was used by CIA. Printers, I gave you the examples, and why not? We have IP surveillance cameras, I would embed something even there. 
Now, that's why there is a big need, and everybody should do something, to put pressure to the industry to change the way, the law, they're actually ruling the world of the IT security. Whenever I'm buying a piece of hardware, any equipment which is meant, for example, to manage national security and critical infrastructure, that piece of equipment should be totally open sourced, totally verifiable. I don't give a shit about patents. We already have the legal patents which are protecting your rights. Why then you shouldn't allow me to do some reverse engineering? I will not anyway the possibility, I will not have the possibility to copy your equipment because it's already protected by the copyright law. So at least open up your hardware, not only the software, and let me see what's inside. And you have now to demonstrate, you have, you General Motors, uh, you have to demonstrate me now when, when I'm buying a GM SUV, eventually my ties will not explode. So you, computer manufacturer, you will have to demonstrate to me that your computer is a legitimate computer. Your um, security uh, UTM infrastructure uh, equipment is not embedding anything uh, bad. We should refuse once for good to carry on the shoulder, on our own shoulder, on buyer's shoulder, the weight of the load of trusting the equipment that we buy if the equipment is going to manage our lives. And the very, very big changes has, have, have to be done, need to be done at low level worldwide. It will be very difficult. There are already some uh, um, free hardware foundation. I found three over the internet. But they're very little project, uh, and they are, let's say, they're not screaming enough. I never heard anybody at conferences speaking about the need of having open source hardware. So if you are working at government level, my suggestion to you it is, well, put pressure over the hardware manufacturer. They want to sell security equipment to your government, good. But then they have to open it up. At least at government level, you should have the right to see what's inside without going through fancy uh, military programs such as the Trust in AC uh, program, which I was showing you before. It makes so much sense to me. It's so logical. But still, we are all blindfolded and very much well educated by the, by the lobby, current lobbies, that we are keen to accept the current rules under which we are buying the equipment if the, the, the software is defective, it's our fault. We carry the responsi responsibility. The software producer is not liable of anything. If I have damages, if I lost data, if lives are lost because of the defective software or defective hardware. So if nothing starts from our side, nothing will happen. So what I wish it is, I don't have the time to do it. Neither do we. I already have too much trouble. Uh, my, yes, but my, my scope here as a security consultant, it is to, to speak about this possi such possibility. Let's try to have an open source hardware on which critical infrastructure will be based. Now, the, I, I was adding this slide by uh, specific request of Dillon, the organizer of the HITB conference. If you remember one year ago, I introduced um, Wabi Zabi Labi, which was the exploit marketplace uh, project. You know? So we set up this company in Switzerland, and we were thinking, well, the security industry is totally lobbied. Uh, the final customer doesn't have any control over what they are buying. Is it secure or not? And the security researcher, if there is any sort of security today, it's thanks to the job done by the security researchers. They're not paid. The, they are ethically blackmailed uh, when the lobby, the, the security lobby, they say, well, you are a security researcher, you found some bug in some software, 
or some equipment, then you should be ethical and you should release this information for free. Okay. But then we have corporations uh, which are buying such information. They are not releasing anything, probably only to the vendor, but they're not warning the world about that. And they're not paying anything, if, or maybe just peanuts to the, to the security researchers. So our project was trying to redesign completely the way the security circle was working, security cycle, sorry, was working, <clears throat> by saying like that, well, okay, you are a security researcher, you give me your research, you found the bug in, I don't know, Microsoft, for example, we open up an auction market and you will be able to sell your security research to the world, to everybody. If you want to buy it, for example, I, I have a security company, I might want to buy security research for somebody. I do penetration test uh, job every day to my clients. I might be keen to pay some thousand bucks to a legitimate guy because he discovered something in, in Microsoft, I don't know, Vista, for example, or any kind of software, and to pay him, okay? Then, this was Wabi Zabi Labi, the Swiss project I was talking one year ago. But then we have a side, a child project, which ended up in this uh, appliance that you see here. It's a UTM appliance. One of the many UTM appliances you, 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 you have the possibility to buy today in the world. It's produced by us. But there is a little bit difference. The appliance is updated with zero-day signatures, so unknown uh, vulnerabilities, directly from the security researcher. So if you buy such appliance, the security researcher will push the signatures of the vulnerability upon verification, of course. To your appliance, you as a customer will pay a fee, monthly or yearly fee, to get these zero-day updates, and we as a company will share back the money to the security researcher, on and on and on. And as long as the zero-day signatures is valid, the security researcher will keep cashing money, which is a very good way, in my opinion, to promote and to push the people to look, to, to, to discover new vulnerabilities, maybe without posting it to the world, but providing already the solution, embedding uh, at the uh, UTM, unif Unified Th Threat Management uh, level, the solution for, for the problem. Up to the moment, the vendor will produce the patch. Now, this ma UTM machine, it's available there, and uh, I'm already talking with some Malaysian people who are interested in distributing here, and uh, they are open sourced, of course. I am totally against, I am a big fan of closed source software. I'm not an open source crazy uh, uh, Taliban uh, guy. <laughs> You know, they're very common in the security industry. You know, I'm, I'm also a big fan of Microsoft, okay? Sometimes the, the code needs to be closed. Or sometimes I should retain the right to close my, my software. Then it's up to you, customer, to whether to buy it or not. But in case of security appliance, I am total against closed source solutions because my customer should always have the right to take every single line of the code which is managing the machine to analyze it, recompile it, so then he, he will be absolutely sure that the machine is not embedding anything, at least at software level, no service backdoors, okay? And my wish, it is that in the near future, we will be able to supply a UTM machine entirely based on open source hardware. Don't expect it very quickly. It will take time. I will struggle for that. So I guess that's it. And uh, we have two minutes for your questions. Please. Uh, hi, very interesting uh, presentation. I was just, um, it just caught me. Uh, you said that um, softwares don't come with warranties and they're not liable. And it just got me, I, I, I'm a, uh, an open source guy. I was thinking that the GPL specifically says that it does not provide warranties or liabilities and they're not, they're not gonna be responsible for anything. What is your uh, take on this? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I was meaning closed source uh, software only. I was referring only to, to software manufacturers who are not providing source codes. Yeah, but uh, will, you know, for example, GPL people, uh, they, they'll just come across and say, well, I'm not gonna give you warranties for this. Software producer is not liable for anything. How many, are you, did you use Windows, for example, in your life? Uh, not anymore. 
not anymore. But if you are a Windows user, but several other, I mean, I was struggling with this Apple computer. I couldn't start my presentation. Uh, you saw, we, 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 were, we started 10 minutes late, okay. How many times you lost your PowerPoint or your Word file? And you had to start over and over and over because you forgot to enable the autosave uh, function. Now, nobody paid you a single penny for the, the time you, lo you, you, you lost, actually, due to this accident. Other questions? Well, thanks a lot. Goodbye.